Devin did a, had an outstanding performance. Like I said, he was uh, going to make a statement, and he did. Uh, he looked amazing, and uh, just beautiful boxing from Devin. Congratulations to him. Uh, obviously, you sparred Tank. Uh, they're saying, yeah, I mean, Devin's team were like, let's fight Tank and things like that. Uh, what do you think of that fight? How would that go? Uh, that'd be a great fight. I say make it happen. I feel like if, if it was at 135, I, I'd go towards Tank. I just feel like, I don't even know if Devin can make 135. I feel like he's just too drained there. That's why he needed to move up. But I feel like 100% uh, Devin and 100% Tank, you know, uh, Devin at 140, or maybe a catch weight. It'll be an uh, interesting fight. Uh, I'd like to see how Tank uh, deals with Devin's boxing ability. And uh, But yeah, it'll be a great fight. I don't know who the winner would be. Uh Up-and-coming star Kermel Moulton says that it would be a great fight, Devin Haney and Gervonta Davis. He says at 35, he would pick Tank. At 140, he don't know who's going to win. That's what I want to talk about in this video. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, a fighter I told you guys to check for, Kermel Moton. Mayweather promotion, that's their secret weapon. Only 17 years old. He did a brand new interview with PBF, and Kermel, he says that Devin Haney looked exceptional. Very sharp performance. Boxed well versus Regis Progre. I was at that fight live. I told you guys how Devin Haney looked, masterclass performance. There was always a hint of danger with Regis Progre. And like Devin Haney says, he totally handicapped Regis Progre. His best weapons, the thing that he's known for, the things that he's supposed to do well, Devin Haney took that away from him. So that's good boxing. Then the question came up, Carmel Moulton was asked about a fight with Gervonta Davis. Keep in mind, Carmel Moulton is a guy who sparred with Gervonta Davis. And I don't know exactly his age, but I think they sparred a couple of times. I know he's 17 now. So that goes to show you the level of talent that Kermel possesses. Because one thing I know about boxing, when you have a killer like Gervonta Davis, your handlers, your people, your trainers, usually they're not going to put you in the ring with the Gervonta Davis when you're 14, 15 or whatever age, unless they really think that you're special or that you can hold your own. What comes to mind is the very youthful David Benavidez. He famously came up in the gym sparring with guys like Kelly Pavlik and Gennady. Yeah, no, guys, hey, Max, big drama show, guys, is is punch, and nah. You know, and again, you're not going to put a 15-year-old Benavidez in with a puncher like Kelly Pavlik unless you think he will be good because you can hurt your whole career or the career of the fighter before it really gets off the ground if you put the fighter in wrong. Even in a pro fight, look at, what's his name, Antoine Douglas. They put him in a little bit too tough and he had back, like, I think it was back-to-back -back losses and we ain't really heard from him since. Because again, you gotta watch how you move your fighter. So sparring is no different. I've seen guys who, and heard stories of guys who were just basically in tough with sparring and it ruined them for their actual fight. Like they put up a bad performance or end up losing because the sparring was too tough. So back to Kermel Moton, he says that Devin Haney, Gervonta Davis is a great fight. I think the world of boxing realizes that it is a great fight and we just got to see it. Now, I'm a realist in this game and I don't care what you want to hear. I tell you what you need to hear. There are some inherent issues in making the fight. You know, you got sides of the street, but more important than size of the street, I think you have two egos, no pun intended. Gervonta Davis, he's done astronomical numbers. He's done better numbers than anyone in 130 to 140 pounds, bar none. He's done, there's no one, I mean, even Canelo's last fight, and this is just facts. See, I don't deal with nothing but facts. Canelo last fight, they build it as undisputed versus undisputed. Jermail Charlo, who was undisputed at a lower, lighter weight class, 154, versus Canelo, who's undisputed at 168. So they framed it like it was eight belts, even though Jermail's belts weren't on the line and he ended up getting stripped the night of the fight of the WBO belt, courtesy of not fighting Tim Zhu, which I've made content about. But 
the point I'm making is they built it as this super fight and the numbers did not do what Ryan Garcia and Javante Davis did. And I know there's a lot of haters. Tank got a lot of haters. Mayweather, Mayweather Promotions. And even though Tank is not signed with Mayweather Promotions per se, still work with Leonard Ellerby. He came in the game with Mayweather Promotions. And some people just want to hate on Al Heyman as well. So that being said, people are attributing all the success of Ryan Garcia versus Javante Davis to Ryan Garcia, which if you ask me, it sounds stupid because why would Ryan Garcia not be the A side if he was the A side? Meaning if he was the one shouldering the whole promotion and the sole, res the sole reason why people tuned in for that fight, then why didn't it say Garcia Davis instead of Davis Garcia? Why did Tank make more money than Ryan Garcia? A lot of people, they feed you bullish in the sport of boxing. And if you don't know no better, it's easy to get caught up in the rapture. Anita Baker, right? And that's the reality. People are trying now to make it even the UFC. Ryan Garcia quoted the UFC. I guess Dana White said they were Ryan Garcia fans, but he don't know boxing. I mean, he said he was going to get into boxing, and then he never came into boxing. So I'm not really going off of a UFC guy. He got that slap boxing. That's his lane. You know what I'm saying? That's Dana White's lane. I'm telling you what it is in the sport of boxing. Javante Davis is that dude. And no matter how much people hate, it don't stop LeBron James and Odell Beckham and Lil Baby and all these rappers and, you know, Tory Lanez before he got locked, before he sat down, him and Madonna were at a Tank Davis fight. So no matter what you say, none of that changes. Tank is still up, it's lit. And it's so funny because Tank is receiving like baby Mayweather hate where people complain and complain, oh, Tank needs to step it up. Uh, he needs to fight legacy fights and he ain't got to do ish because if you think about it, it's the same thing they said with Floyd Mayweather. They said, oh, I don't want to see him fight a Latino fighter anymore. I don't want to see him fight Madonna. But then riddle me this. How come Marcos Madonna Floyd Mayweather part one the rematch did better than the first fight. So all the people who are hating and saying, oh, we don't want to see this again and all that. How come he did better numbers? That don't even make sense. Because if people really didn't want to see it, then you would see less of a turnout and you would see less numbers than the first fight. Similar, by the time Canelo finally fought Golovkin a third time, it did not do as good as the first two Canelo Golovkin fights on HBO the one that happened on DAZN many moons later in the trilogy. So at the end of the day, Tank is receiving that same type of hate. You guys can say whatever you want. Tank is lit. Oh, I don't want to see a Pitbull cruise, but I guarantee you this. Let's say I'm just spitballing. I don't know what Tank's next move is. I'll wait for him to announce it. If Tank fights Aesop Pitbull Cruz a second time in LA, in Vegas, or really anywhere, but especially on the West Coast, Watch what that crowd look like. Don't take my word for it. Make the fight and then we'll see. Because I know the, the great Ego Stradam is about to strike again. So I'm not really pressed about what people are saying. Shout out to Kermel Moten. Definitely an up and comer to watch. He was respectful to both Devin Haney and Gervonta Davis. He sparred with Davis. I'm not sure if he's ever worked with Devin Haney. Devin Haney, he's like etching out his own path. So shout out to both of them. But hopefully we get the fight with Devin Haney and Gervonta Davis. They're going to have to do some serious negotiations to come to terms on a few things, namely the weight. I think that's the biggest obstacle. Devin Haney's talking about going to 47. He said he would come back down to 35 for the right fight. But the way he looked at 40 and how he looked strong, his body looked better, his face didn't look sucked in. I don't really see him making 135, which is what I said before the fight even happened, before the Regis Pro Grade fight night. And Carmel Moten said the same thing in this interview. You know, it don't really sound or look apparently obvious that Devin Haney. I mean, I really don't even want to see Tank versus Devin Haney at, you know, if it happens, put it this way. If it happens at 35 and then Tank were to win, people would say, oh, it's because Devin Haney was drained. So I don't know. I don't know what they do in terms of because Tank is the A side. And Devin's going to feel he's the A-side because he's former Undisputed and things like that. So they're going to have to work that out. 
point blank period but shout out to Kermel Moten let me know what you guys think do you want to see Davis versus Haney I think the whole world of boxing wants to see it but let me know in your comment who you think would win Kermel Moten he said at 35 he would definitely favor Tank 40 you don't know you know because Devin keeps proving people wrong great fight let me know how I did in this video subscribe best in the business and it's not even close no more introducing super thanks right here on the official boxing ego youtube super thanks allows you the viewers to show a little bit of extra gratitude which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing underneath all the videos you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it you can enter any amount that you find suitable as a super thanks a brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself but other people on the youtube platform super thanks a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators hopefully you guys enjoy the content super thanks the future is now the hibernation fives by kanichi bear hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones out of the box you can connect to any console or pc bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym, or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it.